Hi, this is Mason Marangella, AKA The Rig Doctor, and today I'm showing you how to get 80s wet, dry, wet rack tones in a pedal board that's only 17 inches by 10 inches. Let's do it. If you've been watching our channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm somewhat obsessed with a lot of the session icons and session heroes of the 1980s and 1990s, and many of them were using these giant refrigerator rack rigs running wet, dry, wet. A lot of these being built by iconic rig builders like Robert Bradshaw. But the era of the rack has pretty much well died out, and there aren't very many rack units being made anymore, certainly not a lot of racks being assembled for professional players, and for the most part, we've all migrated over to pedal boards. But the issue with running a wet, dry, wet rig, even if it's on a pedal board based system, still requires that you have a mixer and a lot of other things that tend to make the pedal board quite large. But on today's pedal boards, you still need to have a pretty large rig if you want to accommodate a wet dry wet setup. And if you're wondering what wet dry wet means, we have some great diagrams in a few of our videos that document detailed signal paths like a wet dry wet rig, as well as just simple mono and stereo and four cable method rigs that you can check out above and then the description below. So what I have today to replicate those sounds is a 17 by 10 pedal board, uber compact. I have a PBC 6X. That's my switcher that's controlling all of the MIDI, as well as all of the pedals, bringing them in and out of the circuit. I'm using a volume pedal in the insert loop, which is the seventh loop, and that's occurring right before the dry amp. And then as my wet processing effects, I'm taking a line out of my dry amp, and that's going into a collider, which has the ability to run delay and reverb in one box, allows me to mix them in parallel. It's also analog dry through, so it checks all the boxes of what you'd need if you were gonna run an effect for wet dry and that's going 100% wet into a stereo cab Zeus and I'm using the cab Zeus as my speaker cabinets for the two wet images for left and right. So again, my dry image is just the actual amplifier itself that's being mic'd. That has all of my dry effects in front of it, compression, distortion, chorus, and some tremolo, and then it's going into the front of the dry amp, line out from the dry amp, is feeding the collider, that's collecting my delays and reverbs all in parallel, 100% wet, going to the stereo cab Zeus, that's loaded with a Vintage 30 112 cabinet, which is pretty common of what you would have seen during those days, either Pacific cabs with Vintage 30s or perhaps JBLs, sometimes even EVs. And then that's gonna be 100% wet going back into two more channels of the mixer. So again, channel one, dry, channel two, wet left, channel three, wet right. And that allows us to pan the left and right, hard pan those, and then have the dry right up the center. And this is great because it allows us to acoustically mix in the dry sound with the wet sound. And by having the delays and reverbs in parallel, they're not being affected by anything else. They're both getting their individual signal directly from the line out of the amp. It's although we could run the guitar signal directly to each one of these effects independently. So the order of them is not affecting the way that it sounds. And I can mix that in with the dry however I want it or not use it at all. If a producer and engineer back in the 80s didn't like the processing that was being put on the actual guitar tone, if those were mic'd separately like they would be in a wet, dry, wet rig, you don't need to use them. You could always reamp them or do your own processing after the fact. So today with this setup, my goal and intent is to walk you through a few of the basic tones and kind of compare that to what some of the actual rack units would have been during that day, some of the classic songs we might have heard some of that stuff on and do my best to approximate it with my amateur guitar playing to give you a sense. And I would just say, don't analyze the guitar playing so much because I'll never be able to sound as good as some of those session icons or some of our guitar heroes. But if you're listening to the tones themselves, I feel like you're gonna hear the similarities between these types of sounds and that we're really able to accomplish that with something that's really, really small, gives us all the flexibility that we would want of a wet, dry, wet rig, and doesn't necessitate us having two more cabinets and a separate power amp in order to pull off the wet, dry, wet tone. So let's get into it. So let's start first with the dry tone. This doesn't have any reverb, any delay at all, no processing. This is just straight into the amp. Again, line out from the amp, going to our wet effects, but I don't have anything, no processing on. This is just, again, the dry guitar tone. Super simple, nothing fancy going on there at all. Pretty good, just decent clean tone. Again, no processing. 
In classical wet dry wet rigs, most of them were using some sort of preamp or some sort of channel switching amplifier that would kind of be pretty much first in the chain. Maybe there would sometimes be some compression beforehand, but a lot of times the compression would actually come after the line level output. So I first just wanna show you the clean sound using some of that compression and kind of using our clean amp as sort of the clean channel equivalent of what some of those preamps would have been like the custom audio electronics, uh, three plus unit would have been a common one to use back then or the Soldano X88, something like that would have been common for the time. Some people also use the SLO when that came out in the 90s. So let's just kind of approximate a nice clean tone. I'll bring in a little bit of compression and just because I'm not man enough to play without it, I'm gonna bring in a little reverb. Let's just kind of hear a little bit of how that sounds. And this is my RAF Mirage compressor, kind of an LA-2A style compressor. So a classic kind of studio compressor that would have been you know, roughly equivalent to what they would have had at the time. Maybe a DBX might have been a little closer, but I like the size of this, nice and small, allow me to fit it on the pedal board, and I think it nails the sound. <laughs> So definitely on a lot of the Michael Jackson stuff, you would have heard Paul Jackson Jr. doing licks that resembled just that sort of thing. A lot of compression, a lot of pop. He was definitely using some sort of DBX compressor at that time, maybe even a Dynacomp, but a lot of those early 80s stuff had a lot of pop to it. The clean Strat tones were definitely pumping, and that would allow you to get a lot of those kind of classical compression sounds that you would have heard guys like Paul Jackson and other kind of funk players that were doing a lot of studio sessions at the time using. <laughs> Also, you would have heard the compressor used in combination with other clean sorts of effects, in particular Tri-Stereo Chorus of the 1210. In here I have the Red 7 Little Wave, which is an absolute amazing analog chorus that resembles the Tri-Stereo Chorus, which a lot of those guys were using. And if you hear a lot of those other Michael Jackson sessions played by guys like Steve Lukather, you'll see that they're using similar style compression tones and then pairing it with a little bit of chorus to add a little bit more ambience for that clean tone. Not a lot of delay processing scene, maybe it's a tiny bit of reverb, adding that compression, adding that chorus, and using that as kind of a bass layer rhythm clean tone. I'll show you a little bit about what I mean. <laughs> You would have heard chorus definitely all over the Michael Jackson Thriller album, but certainly we hear more chorus being used as we get later into the 80s. And I'll show you some other styles where we might have heard some of the tri-stereo chorus used on a lead sound, also on some other clean sounds with more delay processing. I'm gonna bring in something here that I think is a nice sort of ping-ponging delay, very much akin to what we would have heard on a lot of the 80s rack unit delays. This is kind of along the lines of what you would have heard through the PCM era uh, lexicon units, also the 2290. So I'm gonna be running some stereo ping pong delays. I'm gonna keep on the chorus processing and the compressor and kind of bring in the three critical elements that you would have heard on a lot of that clean processing. Again, kind of taking into account the compressor, which would have been more of like a DBX, LA-2A, 1176 in some cases, bringing in that tri-stereo chorus, which in this case I'm using the Red 7 level wave, and then bring in the collider for delay and reverb again, both both in parallel, 100% wet, being run through the cab Zeus as our wet sort of speaker cabinet emulation. And those are both, again, emulating that kind of lexicon PCM era and a little bit of that 2290 that you would have gotten, maybe some a little, a little bit of ducking delay, a little bit of ping ponging. So let's bring in that in and let's see what we got. <laughs>
So that was more of an example of the three kind of critical pieces to the clean tone. You had some compression, you had some chorus, you had delay and reverb. And I'm, I guess it's three pieces for me, but it would be four pieces ordinarily because the collider includes both the delay and reverb. But I can't emphasize enough how incredibly good the collider is for this purpose because it's compact. It kills two birds with one stone and that it provides delay and reverb excellent algorithms and again it mixes the delay and reverb in parallel as an option so you have that ability to do what would ordinarily require a mixer to in order to combine those two effects in parallel so this is great i think that that's a good sort of basic overview of the clean tone but let's now get into some of the distortion tones we've covered most of the the basic clean stuff i'm going to get into some of the dirtier tones and in you know, all those classic rack units like the custom audio uh, three plus they would have had a clean channel that would have resembled kind of a twin reverb and we're using our clean amp to replicate that that we're running all the pedals into and then to get those two extra channels of kind of the crunch the mid-range crunch and then kind of the high gain lead i'm going to use a tube screamer for kind of the mid gain and i'm going to use a sur riot for my high gain and i'm going to be running those straight into the front of the same amp and then we're going to use some of the same processing that we did here using the delay and reverb which was very common on a lot of the lead tones maybe even some chorus so let's just start with kind of the basic just running the dry amp again so you can kind of hear that and i'll turn off the delay and reverb for this so that we can just again get our reference get our bearings clean dry nothing going on i'm going to bring in now our delay and reverb and I'm gonna bring in our first channel overdrive, which is the Tube Screamer, and that's kind of emulating a little bit more of that marshall -y type sound, a little more of that growl, a little more mid-range. I think it's great for adding a little of that kind of Hendrixy kind of growl, just a little bit of a broken up plexi, not too over the top. And, and I think that that's pretty quintessential of a lot of those three pluses. It wasn't too high gain, but it was enough high gain where you could get a nice lead tone, play some nice single notes, and it was gonna differentiate it a little bit from just a standard clean tone. And so you could even get Stevie Ray-ish type sounds. I know I'm using a, a tube screamer, so it's gonna lend itself more to that. but. Some guys were getting some great lead tones out of this, maybe pushing it a little bit with a boost in some cases, but I think that this is actually a fairly close approximation to what you would get. You might go with a lower gain kind of Marshley pedal if you wanted to get there a little bit more closely, but I think that this is a pretty versatile pedal and assuming that we're gonna go into a clean amp that's more of a Fender style, let's say, I think that the Tube Screamer is definitely nice to fill out those kind of voids that a typical kind of blackface style Fender would have. But I think that it's just a great single note. Definitely sounds big, sounds stratty, but definitely kind of has a little bit of that Hendrixy vibe. I think that that's a good rough approximation of what the second channel would have done on a three plus, very common of what you would have seen guys using it for back in those studio racks. But let's go now to the higher gain channel, which I have the Sir Riot for, and that's kind of emulating more of that Soldano SLO. And if I really wanted to take it over the top, I could even combine it with the overdrive before it, which is the Tube Screamer that's doing kind of the channel too. But let's just hear that on its own. Again, here's my clean reference again with a little delay. <laughs> Now let's bring in the riot. Definitely high gain, very kind of high gain JCM 800 modded JMP style. But I think it sounds great. It gets a lot of sustain and it really nails that high end that you would get from a Soldano SLO for the lead tones. It can definitely do that high gain thing, can kind of get into the Van Halen-ish territory.
you can hear the riot is incredible at nailing those tones and i even really love it for the lead tone i was thinking when i was playing it it, it kind of had that steve stevensy kind of like top gun vibe to it <laughs> Definitely nails that. Even the, the dirty rhythm tone on that, it's like killer for it. I just absolutely love this pedal for the high gain thing. I think it really nails it incredibly well and if you really want to go over the top you can add in the tube screamer running into it it's an absolutely insane lead tone All right, let's talk bonus pedals now. We did the Collider, which has got our delay and reverb, our 100% wet processing. We got our Chorus, which we're using on clean, but sometimes it'd also be used on dirty. And I have a tremolo here, which I didn't mention. On a lot of those old classic rigs, you saw the Super Tremolo from Custom Audio Electronics, and I have the Custom Audio Japan Twin Tremolo, which I think pretty closely replicates what that did. It has two channels, which is great, and you can set one to different waveforms. You got a depth and a rate for each of them. This can be a cool thing to have if you want to kind of really go all in on kind of that Michael Landau style thing. The other thing I have is a Deja vibe. Now, most of the guys back in the day would have been using a Black Hat vibe. I didn't have space for a Black Hat vibe, although they do make it in a pedal format now, and apparently it's an exact replication of what the actual rack unit would have been. But I did use a Deja vibe because I am a big fan of Michael Landau and a lot of those studio icons back in the day. So I did put it on here. But for the most part, I would just be using that to maybe pair with the Tube Screamer to kind of emulate maybe some of that channel two of the custom audio preamp and just kind of making a little more of a Hendrixy type thing. It can also be cool sometimes just to add a little tremolo in there to get some of that land out chop. Love all that stuff. Now the last kind of bonus tone I want to talk about is when you use chorus with the high gain. So I'm going to go chorus with the Sir Riot, still have on my delay and reverb, and I think that this is actually a pretty cool sound that you see a lot of folks use back in the 80s, which I want to highlight here for our kind of finishing up tones. <laughs> So definitely pairing that chorus with the high gain certainly makes it sound amazing. I think it's also cool in some ways with like a little bit lower gain setting to pair it like using kind of the channel two, which I'm using my my uh, Tube Screamer for and kind of getting some of those like Andy Summers type sound where it's like a, there's a little grind from the Marshall, but not too much. It's just slightly broken up, but you get that great like. <laughs> Definitely. 
definitely has a little bit of the grind, but you get that beautiful clean tone. And then of course, if you want to make it pristine, I can just trade that for a compressor from the overdrive. And then you're really in that clean kind of So actually, surprisingly versatile. You can get a lot of different tones out of this. I think it's great when you have the delays and reverbs done in the wet, dry, wet format, 100% wet. I can control those separately or I can eliminate them completely if my timing's a little off or if the delay pattern is not quite right. You don't have to print it. You always have your dry track that you can utilize and then mix those delays and reverbs in parallel with the dry and mix it acoustically to your desired tone so that you can get exactly what you want. And I really feel like even though we don't have a refrigerator rack here and as cool as it is to have all that old gear, this is certainly getting us a lot of the way there. It's 10 inches by 17 inches. I have a volume pedal that's off the board, off to the side, but that's looped in after all of the compression and distortion, but before any of the chorus and the tremolo. And then again, that's going in front of the amp. Then line out of the amp is feeding in to the collider for our 100% wet delay and reverb, which is feeding our cab Zeus in stereo, which is then feeding the left and right channels of the mixer. And then the first channel of the mixer is occupied by the mics that are coming from the dry amp. So we have dry center, 100% wet left, 100% wet right. I think it sounds incredible. I think we're very much of the way there. Maybe there's a few things that this can't do some limitations of this from the rack, but certainly the fact that you can put this in a suitcase, carry it on to an airplane and be able to get all those tones at your feet. I think this is definitely a way to go. And all these manufacturers of all the pedals that we use today, we're gonna list in the description. So if you're interested in replicating what we're doing here, you can definitely do it. Again, this is one of our Vertex pedal boards, 10 by 17. And then I've created a little volume pedal insert. I'll link the diagram for exactly what I did for the interface buffering that's going on on here. And then of course the switcher, the whole brain is controlled by the RJM PBC6X and created all my presets in their software. And I'm using a Boss FE500L, using a giant volume pedal because that's what they would have used back in the day. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for taking this deep dive with us of 80s and 90s era rack tones and whether we can kind of get somewhat complimentary to that using something much smaller with pedals only and creating some cool sounds with those. Let us know what you think in the comments below about how close you thought we got and if you have any alternatives for different pedals that might emulate some of the same things that we got here, maybe smaller pedals or things that you think might work better in place of what I chose for this rig that you think might still fit, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And please make sure that you like and you subscribe so that you're always up to date with all the latest and greatest stuff that we're coming out with on the channel. If you wanna support us further in the things that we are doing here on the channel, you're always welcome to head over to the Rig DR website where we sell all the pedal board accessories that we use to build pedal boards just like this, as well as our pedal board platforms, zip ties, tie down mounts, Velcro, all that good stuff is there. You can also go over to vertexeffects.com, purchase one of our pedals if you're interested in supporting us further, that goes a long way, or from any of our authorized dealers. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, AKA The Rig Doctor. See you later. Thank you.